and starting in three, two, one, go. All right, we are back again, Jalen and I. Thank you again for uh, co-commentating with me, Jalen, and for recording this game. We are uh, doing Summer Night versus Ushi. Um, Summer Night, the team of uh, Beautiful Blondes featuring Phonon, the team of Platinum, who's been banned, uh, Phonon and Vega versus team on Ushi's side, Hot anime girls um, uh, <laughs> representing Rachel Lychee and Wagner. Uh, Lychee has been banned, which I think makes absolutely a lot of sense. Oh, yeah. Um, Ushi, kind of an anomaly as a player, uh, despite being um, having quite good results. I think he's sixth seed in this tournament. Uh, is, you know, hasn't played a lot of people because of the time zone. Um, doesn't really have a mentor. Uh, kind of forgot that he was supposed to have one, uh, is my understanding. Uh, I asked him who he considered his mentor, and he said, uh, I was supposed to have a mentor, question mark. So that seems correct. Summer Night, meanwhile, um, uh, mentored by uh, Mad Norder. Um, few games played in League, only six minimum qualifying, but uh, has a, a pretty solid record. Uh, these two players have never played each other before. And it looks like we are getting right into it. Yep, yep. Phone on to play first. We've got a season six matchup here. As we're mulling. Um, mulling one on phone on side. Uh, I am despairing to see that there is still a coin in the middle of the table. There we go. Thank you. Thank you, Summer Night. So one of us has some sense here. Now, it would it would be a remiss of me to not mention some things that uh, this is post commentary. There was a lot of hectic stuff going on this weekend, which means again, thank you so much to my co host Jalen for for helping out here. Um, I do know a thing about this match ahead of time, specifically about the way that Ushi plays it. Uh, we'll see if it comes out in um in his play, but my understanding is that he is. Uh, splitting his attention right now between League and Exceed, which in, in some ways is impressive. Yeah, I'll, uh, I will I will say it's impressive for what it's worth. I don't know if that stopped being the case at some point. Through, I have to assume it did, right? It's like an hour-long set. Right. I don't know how long League games match. We're talking about League of Legends, by the way, not League as in the Exceed Mentor League that was run prior to this event. Um, I like to imagine that he is he's just gaming on two computers at once. Uh, we can ask him afterward. Of course. Right. Bringing out the tech hit early, I think, makes a pretty good amount of sense, getting, um, okay. getting the ultra boost offline. Although you are... Um, you're, you're not uh, really threatening the attack side of it quite yet as, as Wagner. Uh, still a good boost to have. Still a um, classic interaction. Yep. Okay, going into dive sweep at range three. You love to see that. Phonon uh, making a, a surprisingly aggressive play for Phonon, diving into the corner to do uh, five damage. Um, uh, I think that considering. It was a it was a tech hit. It was pretty safe to think that uh, that's what's going to happen yep. since you're not at range two against Wagner. Yep, I think I agree. Um, Crossing out at range one this early, such a crazy play to me. Yeah. Uh, Crossing into grasp. I'm kind of a an enthusiast of range one cross, but I. I play a character that makes a range one cross as fast as a grasp, so I'm a bit biased. Sure. I also think that it's it like, all right, you're losing your cross, which is rough on you, but you're taking three. There's worse things that you can lose too. I like yeah, I like range is... one cross myself actually. I'm uh, only really a fan of it if I know a grasp isn't there because I value cross so much. For sure. It's the, to me the lowest value normal is grasp. Hmm. Yeah, I, I also think that people are a little bit afraid to play Grasp on defense, though, uh, because of the, the presence of Grasp. 
Yeah, um, I think EX Grass was a, like just a genuinely good mm -hmm. uh, defensive option at range one. For sure. But Grasp on its own loses to so many good options that characters have yeah. unique to themselves. Like, uh, Grasp is already pretty okay on the defense here. Imagine how much worse it was in season two. Right. People had one to three, one seven. Right. I I think that there's also um, like grasp gets substantially more valuable in the late game when you're you're trying to play fast in order to close out your opponent's life total. You know, if you've got three life, it doesn't matter what it loses to. Yeah, it's it's much more of like a pinch hitter. Yeah. Than um, a lot of the other normals, which are you uh, either utility or power. Yep. Striking at two from Pona. Not sure if we've uh, if uh, this is UA. Um, so this is a plus two power attack, I think. Yep. Uh. Yeah, that clean beat sweep here. Push into the corner and then retreat out of range. Just like a genuinely good trade off uh, yep. option to have. Lock and rotor. I think probably uh, uh, Wagner's maybe her best card or one of them. She takes six. Um. One one of the cards that is is quite good even without her boost kit to supplement it. And it's the other one I'm forgetting. It's a uh, on curve uh, range two five damage. Um. Uh, shield Zach. Blood Zach. Yeah, it's just good. Yeah, it's just a solid card. And the fact that it boosts itself on whiff is just amazing value. Now we're running into a thing that happens. Uh, I think it happens a lot in Exceed in general, mm -hmm. but it kind of got me in this match. Uh, the thinking corner. Yeah. Uh, the instant that you get cornered, your turns take three times as long. Yeah. Which I mean, it's it's a fair reason for your turns to take a while. I'll be honest. Yeah, it's a it's a disadvantageous place to be. I like the name. I like the thinking corner. <laughs> You go, I mean, especially a lot of times you're in the corner because of something that you did, you know, like you haven't been pushed there by your opponent necessarily. You, you dove there or you in our previous game. Um, yeah, you advanced there as as Merkava when we were watching Ven and play and Terra play. So yep. going into the corner and thinking about what you did uh, <laughs> sounds about right to me. Yeah, most players end up in the thinking corner at least once per match. Yep. Yeah, maybe that's uh, the sign of a good player. Is it? Is it? You go into the corner with a plan. Now, notably, also, um, uh, Summer Knight plays Vega, who uh, is not in the thinking corner. He's in the stabbing you corner. Vega has thinking round start. Yeah, he has thinking midboard. It's it's like the timeout chair. <laughs> you put the timeout chair in directly the middle of the room for him, but in the corner for everybody else. Yeah, pretty much. A uh, spike. That's just rough. Yeah. Who's she calling mix-ups all over the place here? Ironically, without um too much extra power on the board, that card really doesn't beat anything. Yeah. Yeah, the Phonon's boost kit is really, really important for that. Looks like you're a little bit ahead of me on commentary, actually. Okay, um, I'll pull it back a bit. Where I'm, are you? Don't worry about it. I'm at a... Uh, call it 901 okay just a couple seconds ahead you're calling uh strikes before they appear but that is it just makes you seem psychic that's fine <laughs> it's completely okay yeah. obviously don't worry about it uh 1910 yeah close enough i'm at uh, 1920 now actually okay i'm about three seconds behind that works that's fine yeah apologies to the viewers as we as we work this out uh slight, slightly scuffed recording setup here um, we won't let it distract you too much, hopefully. All right. A lot of prepping, and a lot of prepping while Phonon really might want to be getting out of the corner. Um, yeah, I, I don't think uh, Phonon's, like, movement is extraordinary, but I think yeah. that sometimes you just got to bite the bullet and spend the force. Yeah. I, yeah, you've got a lot of ways to make the corner more comfortable by 
you know, initiating social distance protocols or whatever it is Phonon does. She she, <laughs> she gets you as far away as she can. The other copy of um of uh it's Falk. I'm extremely not German. Um oh, don't worry, neither am I. It, it's cool, neither are the people who made Undernight. So <laughs> we in with that, you know, we share that. Um do you have another copy of Tech Hit? You're in a, a Position where that boost is actually probably more threatening than it was the last time you played it. Yeah, we're at range two, so you could also get in the normals mix up here. Yeah. Now, crossing out doesn't mean anything, but focus is just solid. Yep. Focus, especially with one spike down. Yeah. Uh, not really a lot of ways other than spike for Wagner to, um, to beat slow guardy moves. Um, Ironically, we are seeing... Uh, two characters in the uni cast who have tools that can beat sweep with their ridiculous power buffs. Yep. Um, Wagner has it right there. It's the ultra right there. That ultra sucks. Yeah. Uh, but it does beat sweep. Yep. <laughs> yep. It, and well, I mean, if you're sweeping in the corner, I think you're you're expecting your opponent to cross out anyway. Yeah. Uh, Phonon is is striking here. Focus makes sure sense. Like you said, is about, solid. Uh, yeah. This is. A pretty safe strike if you're playing in slow here uh, and Wagner doesn't have the second uh, spike in hand, it's pretty free. Yeah. I think that makes sense. And also yeah, you're yeah. uh um Ushi Ushi calling out the fast the fast side of the mix up, um catching a lot of things that Wagner I'm sorry, that uh that Phonon might play as specials, but like you say, you play the play the normals. That's what they're there for. I um I forget who mentioned it. Uh, but the fact that reading is on is on dive instead of focus means you get to play focus a lot more in season six. Yeah, and you realize how good it is. Yeah, especially characters who care a little bit less about veil off. I play a little bit of yuzu, and um, I it turns out that having two extra copies of focus in your deck that you can play as cards is man, you can live a long time off that. Yeah. Um. For some characters, veil off is basically just here's your extra gauge, and you revert next turn. Right. Uh, and for this character, it's kind of okay, but usually just playing focus is awesome. Yeah, focus it's, is a good, is a, a good is a damn good card. Wild swinging on defense is Phonon crossing into the grasp. Okay, um, Ushi really, really just capable of calling these calling these plays out. Um, you know, I mean, not you can't really win a mix up off of a off a wild swing, but um, yeah. Ushi is just essentially just kind of winning strikes here. Um, that is both copies of Cross Down on Ushi's side. Yeah. We got a very tentative turn there from Summer Night, that boost. Um, and my favorite part of this game is that whenever it is an Ushi's turn, you can see Ushi's mouse fly away. Oh, sure. Yeah. And we're back in the thinking corner, it seems. A lot more space in the thinking corner now. Uh, yeah. After your opponent crossed out. So what you're thinking, what is what is Wagner actually threatening here? Uh, um, really not, not much. Not she, much. Like, she doesn't really have much that hits past three besides dive. Yeah, she is uh, the fireballless rushdown. Yeah, and I, I think the one thing she does have that hits at four is that other ultra that uh, that we haven't seen yeah. yet. It's actually the ultra that just hit the discard. The uh, really fast one is range one to two. Yep. We're in the thinking room now, it seems. Yeah, the whole room. Oh, take you taking your card back. Okay, that's all right. Misread my own boost. No information has uh has changed hands here. That's okay. Yep, we are uh, entering the world of accepted game states. <laughs> Oh my. But this range Phonon has has kind of whatever she wants uh to hit with. Um you've I got that... you got impulsive frustration, sliding affliction. Um Okay, boosting again. I think uh that Summer was reading it as the plus two power, which would have let his uh, yeah, special hit. let his stuff hit for far farther out. Yeah, but 
no, it is a boost uh, for speed on initiate, which is not what Phonon actually wants. Right. And there's the power attack. Card's great. Or charge attack, actually. That that boost is one of my favorite shared boosts in Uni. Oh, agreed. But... Yeah. Striking it's in. Good on a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, you spend a lot of force to get back in. Leverage your, your life lead here if you're just diving in for nothing. Phonon can push you back out again. Uh, you you really do. I, I think Uji might be regretting having played that cross earlier here. Yeah. This is where it comes back to bite you. Now here, we're going to see another accepted game state. Reveals the strike. Rethinks it. Ushi is tabbed out. Yes. Ushi is, Ushi is, uh, is, is, I don't know what the kids do in League, jungling. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Ushi's busy. Puts the card back in hand, rethinks the strike. Nothing has actually changed about the situation, because mm -hmm. they haven't seen Ushi's card. Right. <laughs> And that entire interaction made me laugh. I didn't, I didn't call because I was like, nothing actually happened. Yeah, and Ushi didn't see the card because he's back now. It reveals the block into. Is that, yeah, sl is wow. that sliding effect? Oh, incredible plays. Yeah, outstanding. I'm surprised that that block was. I mean, it's gauge. It seems like you've got yeah. enough of it as Wagner at the moment. I'm like. I, I get what you mean. I'm astonished that you'd play an uh, empty block against Phonon, who hits like a truck. Yeah, I, I, th I was thinking that that was going to be dive. You know, something to get you back in. Yeah. Um, just content to zone the zoner. And the reason I was sitting here thinking, why didn't they play the ultra? The ultra would have hit. But then I realized, did they not have the gauge for that ultra? Because if they did, why didn't they play it? <laughs> Ultras range three to five there. And I mean, if you're expecting the block, making them pay some gauge out of the 1,000 they have is probably worth it. This is uh, Complete Servitude you're talking about? Uh, yeah, I forget the name of uh, Phonon's 2 gauge ultra. Yeah, Complete Servitude. I think it's uh, if, if you're expecting the dive, I mean, it still hits. The dive's not going to stun you at range 30 or wherever we are. I'm, yeah. I, am, I am enjoying the, uh, the, the anti-zoner wagner play just kind of like crosses out does not move back in and gives giving phonon as much time as uh she needs to, to hit back here finally moving back into two spending a lot of force to undo that cross play you wonder if the three damage was worth it spending the gauge that uh that wagner got on on blocking nothing all that time, uh, Phonon, you're right, did not leave the thinking corner. <laughs> Phonon striking with plus two power here. Forcing Ushi once again to call a range two mix-up in the corner. We've seen this play before. Last time Ushi crossed out. Yeah. I we're out of crosses. I'm expecting either the range two smack or we have. Have we seen both focuses? We haven't, right? No. Okay, yeah. Uh, we're playing two characters, um, mainly uh Phonon, who like to throw around the opponent a bit, mm -hmm. and having a focus on board for. Just uh, strong offensive plays is just nice. Just to eat that push. Yeah. Yep. Especially in Phonon's case, she'll push you like nine or something. Push you over oh. to the next play, Matt. Turning satisfaction. Tuning satisfaction. I can't read, apparently. <laughs> but yeah, fast smack. Yep. Probably the best range two play you've got. Yeah, unfortunately, not fast enough to, to beat out the the, Schl the Schlidzak. I'm going to stop yeah. trying to pronounce the uh, these cards. This is the... I'm, I'm, at some point, I'm going to make a tier list of uh, characters who are difficult to commentate. And anybody with, with uh, non-English attack names is very high up there. Yeah, have you tried 
commentating over Hawkman and not played Blazewa. <laughs> um, we've actually seen several Hawkman games. I know a li- I know enough about it that it's not too hard, but you know, I can see it. Uh, Yuzu has a similar problem. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, all the Japanese attack names. If you are not familiar with the source material, you will just get it wrong. Yep. My my going theory is that they removed Perry from uh, season six so that you don't have to exactly name any of the Japanese any of Yuzu's Japanese cards because you know you have so many of them. Like we're moving in with uh, Sternbrecher. Yep. Uh, tactical is the boost. Very good boost, another universal one. Yep. Uh, there, I feel like they gave this just kind of haphazardly to characters because some make a really good use of it, mm-hmm. and for others, it is basically just move. Yeah, you don't really care about the speed. Yeah, and and Wagner can can kind of move anyway. She's using a really, really good using a speed enough. boost in order to move to range one, where speed kind of classically doesn't matter. Yeah, that's an interesting one. Yeah, I'm wondering if you're if you're you're going for the okay initiating into it with with uh with plus two power pretty confident they're going to beat this win this strike i have to think that this is a slow play Ooh, a very big ex okay a very seemed like a how would i how do you put it um diving out at range one feels like the kind of play you make if you feel like you're going to lose yeah I, like at range two, I could see it if the crosses are down. There aren't any fast options really left at range two that are yeah as reasonable. But at range one, you're asking for a lot of the really fast ex attacks that pull you out. Yeah, um, you're probably you're probably more okay losing. Well, no, I mean, you're, there's nothing you you like about being in the corner as well. And I'm looking for a silver lining that probably doesn't exist here. Oh no, there is not one. You're right. Yeah, looks like this boost is crazy though. I'm 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 still a few bit ahead, uh, that, that that boost I love that boost. Yeah, just being able to recur it over and over again. A lot of Phonon's good boosts uh, have that clause on them, mm-hmm. and it makes her very terrifying if you can't interrupt her or tech hit the boost. Yep. Yeah, just being able to to consistently threat uh, threaten, and also I mean you are you are leveraging that and. Okay, I tech the boost. Phonon says, "Okay, cool. Uh, plus two powered strike." Um, yeah, you know, like you want to be hitting her or reading. Uh, here's another uh, time that the we had a bit of a a bit of a misplay. Yeah, I I interrupted a bit too late because it really yeah, was happening. Didn't put the didn't put the, put the card, card down, down yet. But had the card, no really uh you know, it he would have won the strike had yeah, he played that card, but yeah, yeah that's it that's not how that works. Case. But yeah. I wanted to point this out because I had a feeling that we'd be seeing more readings in the next game. Yep. Makes perfect sense. Solid, solid win from Uchi. Uh a, a twenty zero. Very demanding. Yeah. I think that uh, these two characters probably have a very strong back and forth. You know, Wagner has very good movement, mm-hmm. and uh, Phonon has anti movement. Yeah, I I think it's it's just very very difficult to. In order to twenty zero Phonon, you basically need to not get hit very much, because she yeah she chunks life so quickly. Um, yeah, I I was honestly surprised that I didn't see life get lower, not because of losing strikes but just like you said phonon hits you once and it's like seven eight damage yeah so i mean you just have to i I think on basically every single uh mix-up opportunity uh uchi guessed correctly um and also i think phonon was just just wasn't able to to make those plays in the corner yeah staying corner for so long is a death sentence for this character yeah um they have to have room to shuffle yep Seeing whether Ushi changes over to a new character. 
Yeah, apparently I felt that you had to, uh, what you, you had to, uh, change. Yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not incredibly surprised that we need, I'm actually surprised that we haven't seen more rules, uh, questions during games. Same, honestly. And, uh, I really am not sure. Obviously, you know, I was I was there for the games. I, I know if they switch or not. Mm -hmm. But I think if I am uh, Ushi, I would probably stay Wagner. Yeah. Your other is, Ve your other is Vega. I think that you, you can, you can at least, you have a game to play with to get information if you want it. You, you just yeah. absolutely convincingly beat Phonon. Who's yeah, Vega? There's... That was the funniest part of this. Ushi uh, is very quickly becoming one of my favorite players. Um, my other my other character is Vega. Who's Vega? I had to give the most vague description I could due to the mask and claw. Yep. Ushi very possibly has never seen that character before. That is a very real possibility. Yeah. I mean, both at, at our relative level of experience and also Ushi is, is giving me the in, giving me the impression of a player who is who is not taking things super seriously and who is um you know, like you said, playing League while we're playing. I think their game's done now. I'd have to hope so. Yeah. I mean, League runs for like hours. Mm -hmm. Or usually hour, but All right. We've got I'm Rachel in play. It looks like we've got uh, Rachel so, into Vega. I, I was, uh, I saw the Vega switch, and I was immediately invested. I love playing Vega. Mm -hmm. uh, I was thinking about bringing him, but I knew, oh no, somebody else could bring Vega. Yep. And you wanted to to rep as as many characters as you could. Yeah. Um, Sagat was not my rep choice, obviously, mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah. Um, I saw the Vega, and I was thinking about this matchup as we were as they were getting set up. And I was just really thinking, Vega is the master of mid speeds. Yes. And Rachel's kind of fucked up. Yes. Both of those things are true. And this entire match, just imagine me yelling in the background, go to the corner, I'm begging you. Yep. Yeah. Now I can I can I can see that being the play for Vega. With with Rachel, she's so good at at diffusing your opponent's boost setups you know like like you oh, yeah you do anything into rachel and she has the opportunity to say okay cool you did that now i'm going to go to a place where that doesn't matter anymore um and it's still my turn afterward she's she's an extremely extremely dangerous character when you let her do what she wants it's just that her economy is so difficult to manage because everything that she does costs so much yeah and I think that what really uh, made this matchup so interesting for me is that Vega doesn't need to boost anything. Yeah. All of Vega's boosts that Matt, he has the two. Yeah, he's got his, his, his ultra boosts. Yeah, and then everything else is just instant. Yeah. Because he doesn't need them. His stats lines get insane if he goes from uh, wall to face. Yep. And that lack of uh boost necessity really means that Rachel can't threaten him yeah. in a way that she uh, could threaten other characters that need to put down their boost. She just has to has to play a different game into him. I'm I'm noting that after a game of Phonon spent almost entirely in the corner that it's possible that uh, the reason that you were shouting stay, uh, get in the corner so much is because Summer Night was just like, I've had enough of the corner for now. Yeah. I I will not spoil the game, obviously. But you may be yelling the same thing soon. Okay. Boosting Light, that's great. This uh, Boosting Light is a very strong open as Vega. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you back up to the wall after Boosting Light, you have so many winning options online. Yeah. Just, I mean, if you are the master of mid speeds, like you say, then having plus two speed on something makes everything 
everything essentially terrifying. Like, if we back up to the wall here and do a flying Barcelona, it's speed 5, 7 damage. 7 power, yep, beat sweep, hope your opponent has focus. Yeah. Um, But doesn't even need to call it, you know? It you could, well, I mean, rolling crystal flash also loses the focus. I guess, I guess you do. Yeah. Still have that, but it's uh, yeah. I mean, just alone, seven damage is not is not nothing. Boosting armor and guard. Think, yeah, that's a good way to respond to just either power or speed boost. Honestly, mm. I feel like um, Vega, as a season three character, if you aren't using him, like if you're just doing your crits and not going to the wall, mm -hmm. has a lot of the same season six problems where his cards lose to slows every time yeah he just he just kind of has some some cards that you can look at them and be like question mark until yeah, you like... until you start to start to leverage the arena against your opponent i'm also noticing that uchi has not reset his life total yet nope we'll yeah, have we're a, getting there we'll have a timer up to uh to see <laughs> how long that takes i'm gonna say and Actually, I don't remember. Probably after the first time he takes damage. Yeah, but... I'm going to guess the first strike. Yeah. But what really bothered me the entire time I was sitting here watching this part, we're two spaces away from wall. Yep. You can just do it. You just back up. This boost, it doesn't mean anything to you. Yeah. If the opponent's in this space, plus time, you may put your pull in. He won't hit you. Yep. He just won't hit you. You'll move 27 spaces and he'll whiff. So don't be scared of going to corner. Just go there and then do your play. I kind of like uh, um, Rachel threatening something in the corner to prevent uh, to prevent uh, Vega from moving there. I think the problem is that Vega doesn't actually stay in the corner for very long. Yeah, the so... problem is that unless you are playing ridiculously fast, especially when Vega has light down, right. The odds of you hitting Vega before he leaves the corner are not very high. Right, especially not with plus... Yeah, with with light down, I don't know of anything that... If you're doing Barcelona, it's five. Striking with... At the very least, you're not you're not hitting. Um, even Flying Lobelia, I think. There we go. Don't forget to reset your life. Yep. And now we're on to the first... Actual strike, notably not in the corner, even though we're right there. Mm -hmm. Summer Knight's initiation too, and this range three play kind of made me upset. So I don't remember if I hover it here or not. Sky High Claw is a one four three uh, dive movement, mm -hmm. and if you, the crit is plus three power, if you don't crit it, it, it is it, it's just a. Uh... It's just dive. It's just it's genuinely it's just, it's just worse dive. Yeah, it is slower dive. Yep. And I saw the initiation of the sky high, and I was like, there are no other cards. And that that was also that was Summer Knight's initiation too. That was uh yeah. like like his choice to to go for that move. I mean, well well responded to from from Rachel recognizing that pretty much everything, uh. Everything that Vega could play with zero gauge uh, from that position doesn't beat sweep. Yeah, if if you're a Vega and you want to initiate without being in the corner, you have to have gauge for the crit. Yeah. Because without crit and without corner, his options are incredibly middling. So, initiate. I'm curious if the defensive play... Oh, block? Into grass, okay. I don't think Ushi has ever been at range one and not grasped yet. Yeah. If he has it, he 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 really likes to play on curve, it seems like. Um yeah, I mean You're not happy about losing a block to not really to, to deal one or to to negate one damage. Um you really want to save that for a higher value play. Yeah, using this on a grasp, I mean you've got the gauge and Vega wants the gauge, but it kinda hurts. Mm-hmm. In the long run, you're gonna get hit by like some two, three, seven, five, or something, and just explode. Yeah, you can definitely. Uh, there, I mean, and you're out of parry by doing that. Yeah, and we're gonna notice a lot of mid range initiations. Yep, I'm no nothing yeah. is being forced. Literally, exactly dead center of the board. 
that was a good call up. Yeah, excellent, up. excellent. Uh, I mean, yeah, you can't be too mad at plays that work. Um, I'm. I feel like you are telegraphing a normal by playing at mid range with or at mid board with Vega. Yeah. Um. So I mean, I'm I'm surprised that there was no cross. So to me, the the focus makes sense to just eat damage and draw a card. Um. I yeah, would think Vega's that... playing, uh, mid board. He's probably just gonna go for some medium reward play mm -hmm. that doesn't move him around too much. Mm -hmm. Like a like a sweep or a focus or a spike. Anything that has a minimal chance of whiffing in the early game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think. Slow attacks in the early game. You know, they, they trade incredibly well there. I mean, you also did just see... All right, we're sweeping into a spike. All right, so I just... Ushi's saying I can do that too. Great minds think alike. And that is both... Simultaneously, we've lost... Uh, Summer Knight no longer has any sweeps in play. Ushi no longer has any spikes in play. Yep. Um, changes the math on a lot of these... These uh, mid-range interactions. Um... And now that the spikes are gone, this is like the one time I could confidently say to initiate. Yeah. If you have the focus in hand, that uh, Ushai either has to cross into the corner or take it. Right. And if they with a dive over, oh, see, I didn't. I. Hmm. Now the part that uh, got me confused. I get CCing for cards, mm -hmm. obviously. Yeah. But you do need the one gauge to keep looping crits as Vega. Yeah. And losing that one gauge means you have to now win a strike with a normal, and you're telegraphing a normal now. Yep. Yeah, in the middle of the board. Yeah. So yeah. either you're going to, uh, you're going to try to, you know, you can do uh, even Scarlet Terror. You know, it, it's it's plus two speed when you crit it, right? Yes. Yeah. So it's it's you don't have anything that you can throw away as like a low value hit that. You know, the kind of thing where, like, all right, one of the the benefits of Grasp is that it's very hard to not get Gage out of it if it's hitting. Like, it doesn't always yeah. trade positively, but you're getting Gage for it. Vega doesn't have that. Not in the specials, at least. So you're right that the, the normal telegraphs... I do think that, that if Vega has it, he just plays cross here. Yeah, Vega... This is when Vega crosses out, backs up to corner, and just starts boosting and prepping until he finds what he needs. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, Vega wants to move to the corner, curate his hand, and then start looping corner yeah, stuff. You also have a lot of options to get to the corner, and I, I earlier we actually saw Vega use a boost to get to almost exactly mid board. Yeah. Uh, if he has a back step, that does it. If he has, um, what is it called? Uh, You're talking about repel leap. No, repel yeah, leap. Repel, repel leap uh, is from the corner. Yeah, repel leap is from the corner. He, if he has a wall leap, yeah, on Barcelona, that does it. Yep. There are a lot of cards that do it here, and initiating, I feel like, now that you've lost the gauge, is not the play. Yeah. Crossing out. Valid. Uh, yeah, I already hovered it. Okay. But, um, yeah, we're one space away. And Ushi's probably striking in just to try and land a hit before Vega backs to corner. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one of the lobelias here makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Uh, you can just let, try and land a cheeky hit before Vega has his boosts up. Yeah. Or like his power boosts up. All the things that you would want to respond to to beat the lobelias move you back forward, which is the exact opposite of what Vega wants to do. Yeah. So I, I think if I'm Vega here, I'm just going to wild swing, take the hit, and back up to corner. I agree. If you play from hand here, you're probably losing a play you already had in mind. I mean, if you really want the hit, you could Crystal Flash. That outspeeds, I think, every... No, I think Rachel has... One, two, three, four. Rachel, so it's... uh, it, It's speed six at this range? Speed... Yes. Yeah. I um, uh, got pounce. That sucks. Yeah, on, on offense... um. Rachel definitely can beat that. Yeah, I mean that's the yep. that's the danger of wild swinging, right? It's like tiny Lobelia yeah. down. The yeah, the real pain here is getting pounce. Pounce is an amazing special, yeah. and losing it here kind of sucks. Yeah, pounce is is ridiculous. Um, and you're back, you're back forward. Honestly, 
the the safe play might have been striking with a grasp or something from hand if you had it. You know, like wild swinging, you're pretty likely to grab something that moves you forward as Vega. Vega's dive man. Yeah, it depends on what he has left in hand, honestly. Yeah, if you it's it's a situation where if you've got a lot of you know, you've got a lot of good cards in hand, you don't want to you don't want to waste any of them. But everything else in your deck might move you forward where you yeah, really I, don't want to be. I really think that if he had mostly normals in hand, uh and he was swinging a special from deck, I would have just whiffed the normal in hand. Yeah. I agree. I think you just grasp or block your or or there, rather, in the previous yeah. exchange. Uh, now, also, there notab we go. Notably, uh, Vega can't play sl uh, can't play uh, particularly on curve. Yep, looks like we are moving to the corner finally. We're there. We made it. We made it to the corner. And in the right corner once again. So we're here. If we drew the second pounce, this is the greatest mix-up ever. Like, there's so many options here. We're going to see it uh, soon. This is where uh, the game state almost falls apart. I'm really excited to see this. All right, we've got an exceed is Rachel. Yep, Rachel exceeds. And you might notice it, because I, I didn't. I was recording mm -hmm. at a very specific angle to catch as much of the board as possible. Mm -hmm. And I think sometime soon I changed the angle a bit which partially hides Rachel's overdrive, mm -hmm. which means I can't see what she's doing uh, when he's moving the overdrive. That'll come... That's a, that'll help us later, you know? Oh, yeah. You'll, you'll see. Yeah, I'm... I'm yeah, prior to, prior to this, Jalen was telling me that there's some... Uh, maybe not jank, but some, uh, some game state confusion going on in, in this game, and, and things are barely held together. Uh, which honestly, I mean, given given the way that all of the games this weekend have gone, I'm I'm happy to say that Ushi and Summer Knight are not alone. Uh, <laughs> we're new, we're learning things. Um, we're gonna poke some gentle fun at it, but I've been there. Uh, it sucks. Keeping yeah, exceed is, like exceed is a complicated game. Oh yeah, it messes you up. Boosting retrieve. That's pretty fair. You're losing the corner here, but you are getting one of your really good boosts back. Yeah. So this can be a good value trade if you have a way to get back to the corner. Getting claw, yeah, claws great. Excellent. Especially against Rachel. Yeah, here's where I change the zoom. And, and just barely out of shot is uh, is Rachel's overdrive. I'm curious to see. Now tell me if you saw it. Looks like I, I don't have I don't have uh Rachel's overdrive trigger. Um but she has to she has to discard a card uh from overdrive first. I don't think she can just put it I, it's supposed to be a boost from her hand, isn't it? Boost from her hand and didn't discard for overdrive. Yeah, I think she just played the overdrive from from uh um, played the boost from overdrive, which is not which is yes, not how you which do I think it. is platinum. Yeah, yeah, that sounds right. This is some character confusion, and yeah. in this specific case, talking with Knight after the game, mm -hmm. um, this causes a very poor game state where it alters his choice in card, yeah, and uh, causes a strike that technically shouldn't have happened. This is called exceed as she is played. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, <laughs> assaulting into into pounce. Yep, wasn't faster, so played pounce. A uh, very respectable play. Yep, I agree. Loses hard to uh to spike, but yep. Uh, so does everything. Ditches the rod, yeah, ditches the rod in biggest space for six damage. Uh, doesn't stun because uh, rod is or not, uh, not pounce is critted. It's a, it's an okay trade, uh, for Vega. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the real problem is that Rachel has advantage. 
and is in overdrive. Yep. Yeah, so this is a trade slightly in Vega's favor, but it's still not what he wants to happen, considering they're going to get a follow-up turn. Yeah, pounce is definitely. Uh, I mean, I mean, well done on the retrieve boost to to keep that pounce relevant into into uh, the the lightning rod uh, for the additional stun. Yeah, honestly, it's. I think if you had the pounce in hand, like I said, the greatest mix-up ever. Yeah, from the corner. Ditching the one off the deck. Yeah. If you ditch the one off the deck, people would be like, oh, we must not have the second one in hand then, since he still has a lot of cards in deck. But, the fate is a cruel mistress. <laughs> uh, yeah, we are now playing in a uh, supposedly invalid game state. Yep. Yeah. This is, I mean, you're. We have a we have a convenient situation here in which I'm the TO, um, and I can say, "Listen, we're learning here." Um, yeah, it's gonna be all right. This is this is this is definitely like this is not the way that Rachel's character works. Um, kind of crazy. This is a mentor event. It was being played in a on a very hectic weekend. Um, That's uh, where uh, Knight notices the yep. uh, change in boost from Gage, yeah. uh, from uh, Overdrive. All right, so... Reads so, the card. So, so, yeah, in that in that time, um, the, the Pounce play was... Uh, the, the assault into Pounce was not... Um, was not under a valid game state. Yep, all right, so Summer Knight noticing... From hand. Overdrive. And I say I didn't notice because my camera work is awful. I'm not. While you are uh, recording games for me, um, I'm not going to complain about it. As long as Summer Night and Ushi are okay with the result here. And I think that, that it is it is feasible for Summer Night, uh, you know, playing in a disadvantageous state, a uh, down one game to contest this if he if he wants to. Um, but. You know it this is this is what this tournament is for is yeah is learning things um we are doing our best with what we got here um yeah yeah i i almost agree with uh with ushi's logic here except that i i think that the that playing pounce um would not have yeah yeah, the, the change, the thing that uh, would have changed games to here isn't uh, the speed uh, being like, oh, well, pound, uh, Pounce is, you know, still slower. Right. It's that it's, he it's, plays it's, slow because yeah, he's playing it. Exactly, yeah. It's like, why would I try to outspeed anything when when plus two speeds in play, I'm going to play Pounce. Yeah, and with crit, Vega has some genuinely fast range one options that would have beaten uh, base assault. Yeah. Or even like range one to three, I should say. But accepted game state. Moving on. Yep, we'll take it. And we're in the corner again. All right, you love to see it. <laughs> we had 13 strikes at midboard. It wasn't optimal, but we're here. And if you still got it, here's you use the second sweep for the range four play. Is Rachel? Flips back again. Rachel Platinum. <laughs> and Rachel the Trinity. Another uh, boost in Vegas spot. Really trying to keep him from doing his corner game. Yeah. This one, like, this one, while you're already in the corner, I don't think is, is as effective as trying to keep him from getting to the corner. Yeah, he's already in the corner. He's not going to change his play. He's just going to try and play even faster. Yep. To get out of the corner. Yep. I mean, it might it might be the difference between hit you know taking seven and taking nine damage or something like that. Yeah, because I mean, if you if the play I would do here would be Scarlet Terror. Mm -hmm. You have Claw down and you're in the corner. Yeah. It's uh one seven six close three. 
and if you're initiating, that beats like everything Rachel's got right now. Right. Yeah, barring a uh, barring an ex that I don't think uh, she has. Yeah. Yeah. No, and her world doesn't hit here. So if you do Scarlet Terror here, this is like one of the best plays you've got. Mm -hmm. And flying bars. So that was the other one I was thinking about. With the claw up, this would hit from wall. And if it hit, that was. I don't even want to think about how much damage. What is that? Uh, like a six, it's like, seven, nine damage. It, yeah, it's nine. Um, is it? I think is it more than that? I know you're right. It's nine. Oh. Never mind. It's nine. Yeah. If we were exceeded, it'd be ten. Mm. But I was also, also surprised by is that with all that gauge, uh, Vega didn't keep some when he did CC5 in the beginning Yeah. Uh, to exceed. Yeah, I, I think that, that the the CC option is... It's genuinely hard. It's better than prepping, right? Like, in, yes. even in that even in that state, but you are, you're not having that one gauge left to crit with you, right, is is just a really, really dangerous position for Vega yeah, to be in. Yeah, it's depending on how confident you are in your plays. Mm -hmm. If you think you have something in the deck, uh, or even in hand, that you're willing to exceed for, you just do, like, CC two out of gauge, and then exceed. Is that another uh, CC zero from Ushi? Uh... No, I don't think it was. Advantage. Oh no, I'm sorry. No, it's it's um no. it's uh yeah, they're... choosing to draw instead of another. I thought that was with with the advantage turn. No, they uh went back on the decision to gain advantage and drew one instead. Yeah. I thought with, I thought advantage. with advantage they drew one. That'd be uh, if we had a CC0 from Rachel, I would close the video honestly. From, from range 3. Yeah, from range 3. Yeah. Really keeping that deck pressure up from mm -hmm. here. Mhm. Mm So what's the Vega play? The first way you need to make is getting off this base. Yeah. Forward or back, because you don't have enough health to take a lightning rod. Yeah, preferably preferably back your Vega. Yeah. As much as I hate spending any force, I would just spend the force to move back. Yeah. Because if you happen to strike here and get hit, you're just one hit away. Yep. Yeah. Because I... the rods do, do non-lethal, but... Yeah, Vega also, I mean, both your pounces are down. If you're trying to use any special at all, um, you better be playing fast, even with like a, you know, even with a a, a grasp um, at this range, Rachel's able to defuse a lot of your setups. So either play a yeah. normal or be playing very, very quick if you are initiating. I think playing Mask here is an okay idea. And not... not like having the extra armor helps. I think that it's it's just as good an idea if you do it from a different space, though. That is very true. <laughs> yeah, you know, just you know, like leave first, establish a game state that that you yeah. like. I mean, that's hard to do against Rachel. Rachel can just yeah can just undo whatever it is that you're doing by zooping yeah, but around. If you're if you're a Vega and the opponent is mid screen, you have so much real estate to work with on both sides mm -hmm. for all of your specials. Yeah, classic. Uh, not GG's because of mask and the fact that rod is non-lethal. Yep. But yeah, initiating uh, it takes the corner with a with a a mid-speed below curve dive. That's actually a very a very cool play. Yeah, I think if uh, you're playing into a Vega that isn't uh cornered, he he had the gauge, but he didn't. I don't think he had the special to counter that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it is a mix-up. I mean you can just you can just assault with it. Um. Yeah. But. You don't want to get away from the corner. Yeah, I think that that's just a card that he didn't have. Yeah, unless I'm mistaken, have, have we seen Scarlet Terror this game? Uh, I think we saw Aside it boosted, from... um, or discarded. I, I saw it go down. Yeah, I, I, I don't think that it was an attack. Yeah, so um, there should still be a second Scarlet, and Scarlet's a great card. Yep, above uh, above curve on crit. Um, I think I I mean I, mean, I usually see it being used as repel leap. Repel Leap is great. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, in this in the situation where you're not getting the corner. Yeah, just playing it to hit is just nice. Yeah, absolutely. 
I feel like Repel Leap is if you have a better play than Scarlet Terror in your hand. Which Vega usually does to be... Oh, whoa. Yeah, I mean, most of the time you're you're trying to hit ooh. from more than three with Vega, and Scarlet Terror is not. This is kind of risky. Yeah, I mean, you got one life left. Everything you're going to do at range one is risky, I think. Okay, well, yeah. Yeah, this is this is a Hail Mary reading Cross. So this is Grasp. This is face-up Grasp. Or I th something else faster. I actually like that play. I like that one a lot. Yep. Reading cross to speed tie the cross and get out. Yep. Ushi did have, I, I believe, had EX cross uh, uh, still in deck. So that actually, even with that play, could have been risky. I do like the um, uh, reading into something that is is almost unbeatable. Um, I mean, but if you still, if you got the grasp, you just die. So, and you really could have used that focus to not die from the grasp. But no, oh, never mind. No grasp still kills one one life. Yeah. Without mask down, everything kills. Yeah, so. pretty much. Uh, except lightning rods, but yeah, they get now notably in the uh, the the corner of the mind, maybe. Um, not the corner of the board. <laughs> we're, not, we're not at the uh, thinking corner with the thinking cornerstone. The thinking corner is wherever you want it to be. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah, the moving is a bonus action. That had to be messed up. I didn't realize that. Oh, yeah. No, the uh, uh, changing... You you pay a bunch of force to Super Ryu, basically. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a useful action. I just didn't realize it was extra for Rachel. Yep. Even though it, you know, it's not extra for anybody else, so it would have to be extra for somebody. Yeah, but... it, it's, a, it's an incredibly powerful ability to defuse um, your opponent's advantage. They play speed, oh. you move to range one. That's looking like game. Catch up, that's an EX attack. One life, if you don't pull exactly the out, that's game. And I don't think that's doing it. Yeah, wild swing into a focus. Yep, probably nothing. There's nothing, yeah. that, there's nothing that focus uh, beats here. Part of the card, sorry. Sorry, Summer Night. <laughs> All right. Playing it into uh, Whirlwind God. Yeah, I mean, you don't even... If, yeah, if it beats the block, that's pretty much everything you got. Uh, yep. On curve, ignore armor with spike drop. Well played to Ushi. Um, uh, navigating a tricky, uh, a tricky game state there. Um, I will, I, you know, maybe I'll talk to the participants afterward, make sure they're both okay with it, but... Um, and... As we have about a minute left in the broadcast, uh, Jalen, once again, thank you so much for recording this game and for co-commentating with me. Um, really, really cool to see. This is this is the first time that I've seen Ushi play because time zones have not worked out, and it's exciting to watch him. I am going to uh, shut off the recording, and I will see you all later.